Hello everyone and welcome to another PAT Problems video. My name is Helena and I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for the Department of Materials here at the University of Oxford and today we're going to be taking a look at question number 17 from the 2013 PAT paper. So let's have a look at this question. So in this question we have two masses, lowercase m and uppercase m, which are connected by a massless string of a fixed length on a slope inclined at an angle alpha as sketched in this diagram here. The pulley P is massless and we're told we can ignore friction. So we're being asked to calculate the acceleration of the mass little m and the tension of the string. And we're also asked about the condition for the masses to be stationary, i.e. the condition for A, the acceleration, to be zero. OK, so first things first, let's have a look at our diagram. So what's going to happen to these two masses when they're released from rest? So we can assume that the uppercase M mass is greater than the lowercase M mass. And therefore, this mass is going to accelerate vertically downwards. And this mass is going to accelerate up the slope. And they're going to have the same magnitude of acceleration because of the way they're joined through the string here. OK, so that's the acceleration. Let's have a think about the forces. So what forces are acting on these blocks? Well, first of all, we have the weights of both of them. So we have a weight of big MG acting downwards on this block, and we have a weight of lowercase MG acting vertically downwards from the center of this block. OK, and we also have the tension in the string, which will be acting up the slope here and vertically upwards here. And again, the magnitude of the tension is going to be the same because of the way they're joined with the string here. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to resolve the forces on both of the blocks separately. OK, so for this block, it'll be fine. It's just in the vertical direction. But for this block, we're going to want to resolve the forces um, in a direction parallel to the incline of the slope here. So for this, we're going to have to split the weight into a component perpendicular and a component parallel to the plane. OK. So to do that, we know that the angle here is alpha, the same as the angle of incline of the slope. And we have a component of the weight acting perpendicular, which is mg cos alpha, and a component of the weight acting parallel, which is mg sine alpha. OK, so we've set up our diagram, we've looked at the forces. Now let's resolve. So first of all, looking at block little m, if we resolve the forces, we have that the tension minus the component of the weight acting in the opposite direction down the plane is equal to its mass times the acceleration. And similarly, if we look at block big M, we have that its weight mg minus the tension is equal to its mass times the acceleration here. So now we have two equations. Let's label them one and two. And now we can rearrange one of these to eliminate either T or A and substitute it back into the other equation. So I am going to rearrange equation two to make T the subject and then substitute that into equation one. So if I do that, I find an expression for T, which is equal to big MG minus big MA. I'm going to call that equation three. So I'm going to substitute that into equation one, which would give me big MG minus big MA minus mg sine alpha equals little m a. OK, so I want to find the acceleration from here. So I'm going to collect all the terms with an acceleration on one side and then rearrange. OK, so if I do that, I find that big mg minus little mg sine alpha is equal to little m a plus big m a. OK, so let's factorize out the a on the other side. We take that outside a bracket. We have A into the sum of the two masses there. And then we divide through by that. And we can also actually factorize a G outside of a bracket here. So let's do that. So it's G into big M minus little m sine alpha all over the sum of the two masses. And that is our expression for A. So that's the first thing that we've been asked to find here. OK, so the second thing we've been asked to find is T. So if I take this expression for A and substitute it back into equation three, we get our expression for T. So T is big MG minus big M into this expression here. So we have G 
big M minus little m sine alpha all over the sum of the masses. Okay, so we could just leave it there, but that's not very neat and tidy. So we want to express this as a single fraction. So to do this, I'm going to multiply this term here by the denominator, and I'm also going to expand this bracket here. So let's do that. Um, so two steps in one. So if I do that, I find I have mmg plus m big M squared g minus big M squared g plus mmg sine alpha all over little m plus big M. Okay, so now we see that these terms nicely cancel and we can factorize out an MMG term on the top here. So if I do that, I find I have that into one plus sine alpha all over the sum of the masses here. And that is our expression for T. Okay, so the final thing we're being asked in this question is what's the condition for the masses to be stationary? So for A to be zero. So let's look at our expression for A. So for this to be zero, we can see that we need this term in the brackets here to equal zero. Okay, so for A equals zero, we want big M minus little m sine alpha to be zero. So let's rearrange that a bit. So we have that big M equals little m sine alpha or sine alpha is equal to big M over little m. So that is our condition there for the acceleration to be zero and the masses to be stationary. So that's everything we've been asked for that question. I hope that was useful and I hope you will tune in again next week for another Pat Problems video.